Well, the science boys have come up with a sunshine kick that makes electricity out of your sunlight. Oh, yes. You mean the solar battery? Yeah. That's hardly even a cookie yet, let alone a cake. Doc, that's big news. Well, the, the solar battery. Now, held in the sun, this thin little cell, a sunshine wafer, we might call it, produces a usable amount of electric current out of the sunlight that falls on it. It was cooked up out of basic research at the Bell Telephone Lab by three scientists, Darrell Chapin, Calvin Fuller, and Gerald Pearson. You know, although this is quite expensive at the moment, the simplicity of this sunshine wafer is startling. Well, bake one for old glory, <laughs> puss, Doc. I'd be delighted. Well, get him! Old pastry cook research. The recipe for this solar wafer sounds just like a vacation. Just sand and sunshine. Thank you, son. <laughs> Plain old sand is composed of silicon and oxygen. Its Sunday go-to meeting name is silicon dioxide. Separate out the oxygen and the bits of seaweed, bottle tops, and other odds and ends. And we have left a metal silicon. Ah, but our silicon must be pure silicon. So we purify it and purify it until it's as pure as the driven snow. Now melt the silicon and add just a pinch of arsenic for flavor. Mix thoroughly and cool until it crystallizes. Then, from the arsenic-flavored silicon roll, slice off a razor-thin wafer. Put the wafer back into the oven, fill oven with a boron gas, and bake to white heat. And the boron cooks into the surface, forms an extremely thin icing over the wafer. Remove finished wafer, connect one wire from electric motor to boron icing, and the other wire to the wafer itself, expose wafer to sunlight, presto! The motor starts running with the efficiency of an automobile, and nothing is used up but the sunshine, which is free. Is that something? Well, I'll be darned. So you see in a solar battery, it's energy from the sun that moves the electricity, which in turn rotates motors. in this case, powers rural telephone lines by charging storage batteries. But the solar battery isn't all. There's other important research in changing sunlight into power. Dr. E.I. Rabinowitz has put together a chemical cell that'll change light waves into electric current. But storing sun power for night use is a big part of this energy from sun problem. Well, Dr. Lawrence J. Height of MIT is experimenting with a process in which sunlight decomposes water back into oxygen and hydrogen, the hydrogen being a storable fuel. Another possibility, phosphors are chemical powders that absorb sunlight and can give it back slowly in the dark. I read where Westinghouse engineers predict a wallpaper containing phosphors which will absorb daylight during the day, then glow for hours after dark. A city painted with phosphor paint of the future might glow all night. These are some of the processes that are being researched on a small scale today, Mr. Sun. But our engineers can't turn the wheels of industry on little wafers. They'll have to build efficient generators that spread out over acres, even square miles, to compete with the cheap coal and oil still available to us. Uh, but, Doctor, what about atomic power? Oh, great hopes for it, of course. Especially now, since atomic plants can make their own fuel with so-called breeder reactors. Some even dream of imitating the stars, getting power from hydrogen fusion. But if dreams fail, the answer must be sun power from our Mr. Sun. What if you don't find ways to use my free sunshine for fuel? Then the machine age is over. We'll have to go back to muscle power and the half-billion population that muscle power alone can support.